What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. Over the last year or so, inflation has been rampant globally. Central banks have increased interest rates in response to this, and in Malaysia, this is referring to our OPR. As the scale of all of these impacts differ by country, currency rate fluctuations are also starting to show. But how does inflation, interest rate, and currency exchange rates correlate? Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll also give you guys some examples of why the Malaysian ringgit is weak against the US dollar and GBP. The first thing that we have to understand is inflation. Inflation is basically the increase in price of goods and services that we pay for. The most common example of this is when you know, you're going out to a kopitiam to have our lunch and dinners and the price of our meals start to go up. Another way that businesses could deal with inflation is what we call shrinkflation where they keep the prices the same but the amount of goods that they give to you is a lot less. The thing about inflation is that it's completely normal and it happens all the time. In fact, central banks set an annual target of around 2% inflation, which is pretty much in line with where they want to see the economy grow. However, inflation starts becoming a problem when it gets rampant like we saw over the last few years. In the US, it peaked at a high of 9% inflation in June of last year. Since then, inflation has actually dropped back down all the way to more normal levels. In Malaysia, things weren't so bad, but we still hit a peak of 4.7% inflation sometime last year. But how did all of this happen? Basically, in 2020, during the lockdowns, the economy was in a serious slump. To deal with this, central banks globally had to take some actions to drive consumption, and there are two main ways that they did this. Firstly, they increased the amount of money that we see in the economy. In the US, for example, I'm sure many of you know that meme of Jerome Powell printing more money as the Fed president just to spur the economy. In Malaysia, while we technically didn't print a lot of money, I think, but initiatives like allowing EPF withdrawals also boost the economy. The reason for this is that EPF money is meant to be locked for the long term. This is money that previously never entered the economy, but when we start to allow a lot of people to withdraw this money and spend freely, then surely it will boost the economy. The second tool that central banks globally use to further strengthen the economy is by lowering interest rates, which brings us to the second topic of today. Interest rates are called different things based on where you're from, but essentially the central bank determines it to manage the economy. It's, as its name implies, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but it is how much we would pay when we borrow or lend money. So the way it works is that the central bank will set an interest rate based on what they want to do. When the central bank increases interest rates, for example, the cost to borrow money will also go up. So commercial banks like Maybank, CIMB will also have to pay a higher rate because they do borrow money from central banks. When they have a higher cost of borrowing themselves, they will also have to charge a higher amount when loaning out money to consumers like ourselves. This is why you see rates displayed like this when taking out loans such as ASB financing. SBR is basically just another fancy term, but it is benchmarked against Malaysia's OPR. So in this example here, you can see it's SBR plus 1.6% for a total of 4.6%. This is because the current OPR is at the 3% mark. If the central bank decides to increase the OPR to 3.2%, then the total interest rate for this will be 3.2% plus 1.6%, meaning we pay a total of 4.8%. This is the reason why you see many people get upset every time Bank Nagara increases the interest rates. Imagine you bought a house in 2021 when interest rates were low and your mortgage payment was, let's say, 2,000 ringgit a month. Now that the banks have increased the interest rates and because housing loans are usually variable in price, you will have to pay, let's say, 3,000 ringgit a month now, which could impact your cash flows. So how do central banks use this? If the economy is doing bad, what central banks will usually do is they will reduce the interest rates. This is because when interest rates are low, people are more willing to consume. Just think about it this way. If interest rates are low, for example, in 2020, 2021, then it'll also mean that we will have lower monthly payments for stuff we want to buy like a car or a house. Trust me, if Tesla launched in Malaysia back in 2021, I'm sure a lot more people would be lining up trying to buy that car. And it's not just consumers. Businesses will also be more willing to take out loans to fund the growth of their companies. When the economy gets too strong or inflation gets too high, then central banks will have to do the opposite, which is to increase interest rates. So this deters consumers from going out there and buying the new car or the new house just because monthly payments have gone up. 
This is to reduce consumption so that the economy can start to cool down a bit and inflation can go down. You can see this entire cycle play out in Malaysia, but also in many other countries globally. So starting in 2020, interest rates were normal, everything was normal, it was sitting above 3%. Because of lockdowns, the economy was in need of a boost, so Bank Negara did a series of rate decreases, bringing it all the way down to 1.8%. When it was this low, people started taking out loans, people started buying stuff, and the economy started to really recover, but eventually it hit a point when it got too hot. So starting in 2022, Bank Negara realized this, they started to see inflation go up, so they had to bring interest rates back up. Today, after a series of rate hikes by Bank Negara, we are where we basically were in 2020, all the way back to the 3% mark. But obviously, each country has a different inflation rate, they're all reacting to it differently, so each central bank has to take different decisions based on where they're at. For example, in Malaysia, inflation I would say is pretty much under control. In the US, it was really really high last year, but over the last few months, we have started to see signs of inflation going down, which in the last CPI report in July, really showed that inflation has come down. As a result of this, in the last Fed meeting in June, they decided for the first time in I think 11 months or a year not to increase interest rates. However, if you look at the UK for example, they haven't been so successful in their fight against inflation yet. Because of this, what Bank Negara versus the Federal Reserve in the US versus the Central Bank of England will do will be probably different. I would say that in the next few months or quarters, the Bank Negara and Federal Reserve in the US will have pretty much similar approaches to interest rates whereas in the UK, they'll probably have to hike interest rates a bit more. So because there are different decisions with this regard, this is where the impact to currency exchange rates come in. In its simplest form, currencies are like a product. The more demand there is, the higher the price of the currency. If people don't want that currency, then the price of it will drop against other currencies. Just a quick side note, stronger currencies aren't always what a country wants. For example, in China, they actually put in effort to make sure that the renminbi doesn't get too high against other currencies because they need to continue exporting their goods. That's a story for another day though. Back to the topic, how do interest rates impact foreign exchange rates? Imagine it this way. Let's say you have 10 million ringgit because you followed all of our tips and you want to invest your money in some safe government bonds. In Malaysia, interest rates are 3% so government bonds pay out 3% whereas in the US, interest rates are 5% so US Treasury bills pay out 5%. Let's say our assumption of the risks are similar, we don't think that the Malaysian government or the US government will default anytime soon. Having taken this into consideration, we will obviously go with the US Treasury bill just because it pays more. So in order to invest in US Treasury bills, we will then have to sell our 10 million Malaysian Ringgit, convert that into USD, and then invest in those bonds. So obviously in this scenario, because I'm selling Malaysian Ringgit, I'm buying USD, Malaysian Ringgit will weaken while the US dollar will strengthen. So basically, because inflation was higher in the US, the Federal Reserve had to hike rates more than they did in Malaysia. And because of that, their interest rates are now higher, making their currency more in demand because investors want to get a piece of the juicy 5% returns. This is a bit ironic because technically, inflation should devalue a currency. If I know that prices in the US are going up by 9%, then surely the US dollar isn't so strong anymore, right? Well, my theory is that people all around the world, investors, fund managers and stuff like that, they have the opinion that the high inflation in the US is just a short to medium term thing that can be fixed. If for example inflation is persistent, it's a long term thing like let's say in Argentina, then definitely higher inflation will not lead to a higher currency price. So this explains why the USD has not only been stronger against the Malaysian Ringgit, but also nearly every other currency since the start of this year. Things are finally starting to take a turn though, in July, like I said, the CPI or inflation print came in lower than expected, so people expect the Fed to stop hiking rates. Maybe over the next 1-2 to two years, the Federal Reserve may even decide to start reducing rates again back to let's say a 3% level. So because I expect that future investments in the US may not give me such good returns anymore because the Fed will start to reduce rates, then the currency or the US dollar will start to decline as well. And that is exactly what we saw after the CPI print. 
In the UK, however, like I mentioned earlier, inflation is still high, so investors still expect the Central Bank of England to continue increasing rates. And this explains why the GBP is stronger against the Malaysian Ringgit, but again, it's not just against us, it's against nearly every other currency out there. If you compare the GBP to even the US dollar, the GBP has been strengthening ever since November of 2022. Of course, there are many other factors that influence an exchange rate, especially if you want you know, long-term gains, then it can't just be playing on interest rates. However, interest rates do have an impact on at least short to medium-term fluctuations in exchange rates of countries. So, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a big thumbs up, share it to your friends, and subscribe to our channel. I'm sure this topic will be fun at parties, right? Anyway, see you guys in the next one. Peace out.